Well, we just did the Serbia episode, and it feels great knowing that we are back to doing countries where we don't have to do insane backstories riddled in Balkan Slavic conflict. In fact, this country doesn't even have an indigenous population. It's one of the few rare countries that nobody lived on until modern history. And since then, they've become one of the top richest countries in Africa. And why is it always the certain small island nations that have economic booms? Uh, proximity to rich countries while offering obscure high-end luxury tourism? Uh, I don't know. Geographic advantage on a trade choke point with strict mobilizing policies? I don't know, like weird finance loopholes? Uh, a desirable resource that we forgot to put into a pension fund? Oh sh**. Eh, Seychelles doesn't really fit any of those. They basically just did what I did. Bingo. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Now, the Seychelles may be a part of Africa, but the people here kind of see the Indian Ocean as a bigger part of their identity. They are water people, and they have a very unique story. Much like these Geography Now t-shirts, or Geography Now mugs, or Geography Now drawstring bags. Of which it's fourth, you can get at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's my brand. Anyhow, this episode is gonna be so great, you'll say shelf this one in the cool part of the book shelf. <laughs> Yeah, it was Jillian's turn. I think everybody else on the cast had their time, so. Yeah, oh. we sure yeah. did. You did so great. I taught you yeah, so well. Well, well, well done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there they go. Few countries like Seychelles can truly give that raw, invigorating feel of being an Indian Ocean island nation. First of all, the country is located in the Indian Ocean, a ways off the eastern coast of the African continent, northeast of Madagascar. Made up of 115 islands divided into seven cluster groups, which are the Inner Islands, with the Northern Coralines, and the Outer Islands, made up of the Amarants, the Alphonse, the Farkar, the Aldabra, and the Southern Coraline group. About 98% of the population lives on only three islands in the Inner Island chain, Mahe, which holds the the country's capital, Victoria, and this island altogether has about 90% of the population. A little bit to the east, about 5.6% of the population lives on Pralin and 2.3% on Ladig. The remaining 2% of the population, or just under 2,000 people, are dispersed amongst 40-ish islands, the vast majority at about 1,500 in the inner island chain alone, and the remaining quarter in the outer group. Half of these outlier islands have less than 10 people on them. Many of them are only seasonally inhabited for part of the year, and some of them only have a single resident. The country the country is divided into 26 districts, 8 alone just in the capital Victoria, and from there the rural parts of Mahe Island have another 14, Pralin Island has 2 districts, and Ladig in itself is its own district, and all the rest of the outer islands are collectively the last district. Mahe Island holds the largest and only international airport, Seychelles International. From there, there are about 15 other smaller regional airports and airstrips for low passenger capacity turboprop planes. Fun fact, they are the smallest country in the world to have their own national airline, Air Seychelles. In addition, they also have the largest seaport of the country, Victoria Port. Outside of the heavily populated Mahe Island, the second largest settlement would be Bay St. Anne on Pralin Island and La Paz on Ladig Island. Traveling to the outer islands and atolls is a bit more tricky and time consuming as they lie over a thousand kilometers away from the inner island chain. The furthest airstrip is located on Assumption Island in the Aldabra chain. There are no regular scheduled sea vessel transport systems that travel between these islands, so flying is probably your best bet, and it will probably be expensive considering the remoteness and lack of commercial demand. Yeah, you're most likely just gonna see the three main islands if you visit, but fun fact, Seychelles is actually one of the few visa-free countries in the world. How can they just let people in without a visa? Well, it kind of goes like this. All right, made it to Seychelles. Here's my passport. Do you have a return flight proving you're gonna leave eventually? Yeah, here's my itinerary. Do you have contact info for the accommodations you'll be staying at? Yeah, bookings are right here. Alternatively, if you are staying with a local, you can give their personal info too. <sighs> can you prove you have enough money to spend while you're here? No problem. Do you promise to like not miss your returning flight and not illegally live and work here? Yes. Welcome to Seychelles. And that's about it. From there, the three main islands have their own ring roads and you can commute with small buses or the more common option, taxis. And some of the top notable places you can take with those taxis if you decide to visit might include the National Gallery of Art, the National Culture Center, St. Anne National Marine Park, Eden Island, the National Botanical Garden, St. Paul's Cathedral, the Cathedral of Our Lady of Immaculate Conception, Sir Selwyn Clark Market, the Natural History Museum, the Little Ben Clock Tower, Mission Lodge Lookout, and probably the most notable site, the Aldabra Atoll. It's incredibly difficult to access and it's home to over 150,000 giant tortoises. Tordi. Tortoisei. The hell is the plural for tortoise? Oh, plural is just tortoise. Tortoise is the plural of tortoise. English fun! Yes, you heard that right. Giant tortoise. And we haven't even talked about the weird coconut thing. That will be discussed in the next segment. Duh. 
The nickname of Seychelles is the land of perpetual summer, as the weather is not only usually amazing, but they generally lie outside the cyclone belt and henceforth with have an ideal climate to enjoy. And it's not just the climate that Seychelles can boast about. For one, the country is located in the Somali Sea segment of the Indian Ocean, almost at the center of the Somali Plate, a subsection of the Greater African Plate that starts at the East African Rift System. It is the smallest country in Africa by land area at only about 460 square kilometers. Unlike other neighboring islands like Comoros or Reunion, Seychelles is not volcanic in its foundation and are predominantly granite and raised coral islands. The majority of islands in the inner island chain, like Mahe, Pralin, and Madig, are made up of granite, and the rest, especially in the outlier regions, are coral or coralline. With its larger landmass and shallower beaches with natural ports, this is the reason why many of the inner islands were the primary choice of habitation for the majority of the population. Mahe Island in itself carries the extreme points of physical features. They have the tallest peak, Mont Seychellois, at just over 900 meters high, which is the source of the long longest and largest river of the country, the Cascade River, named that way because it has these really cool looking cascading waterfalls. And finally, they have the largest inland body of water, the Lagog Reservoir up north, and it holds the most fresh water that is supplied to the people. Keep in mind about half of the entire domain belonging to Seychelles, including the water surrounding areas belong to nature reserves and marine protected areas which prohibit commercial construction. Yeah, and speaking of special areas, the Valley de May National Park is one of the only two places on two separate islands in the world where you can find the Coco de Mer, the world's largest nut shaped like a woman's hips or a butt, whatever side you see. The rarity of this nut makes it the most iconic and sought after souvenir that can go for hundreds of dollars depending on the size and shape. They're essentially coconuts so you have to scoop out the meat on the inside and dry out the hollowed shell. <laughs> Really? That's your gimmick? Mine was the dodo and everybody knows about that one. It's world famous. At least my gimmick is alive. Now listen here, you little Anyway, with that, it's time for my triple shot of espresso break, which means Noah comes in for the rest of the segment. Noah? Sorry, Paul. I can't do my segment today. The Nine Realms needs us. Until we meet again. Oh, shoot. Yeah, okay. He's not free. Uh, you know what? I'll fill in. I'll fill in for you, Noah. I haven't done this in a while. You know, get back to my roots. All right, so with Seychelles, there's a lot of natural beauty, but limited space and resources. Now, although there is a somewhat persisting agriculture industry, mostly producing coconuts, sweet potatoes, and vanilla, people actually working in the agriculture industry have declined from about a third of the population to only about 3% today. Since then, the majority of revenue stems from two sources, fishing and tourism. Fishing accounts for somewhere around 16% of the GDP, mostly with tuna being their main catch. They love tuna here. Woo! For tourism, the whole industry kicked off mostly in the 1970s when the international airport was opened. From there, it became a nearly overnight success. High-end luxury resorts and villas were constructed. They often host a wide range of high-profile celebrities and personnel such as Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston, Prince William and Kate Middleton, George Clooney. <gasps> George Clooney? Yeah, my mom loves George Clooney. Nonetheless, the successful tourism industry does have its drawbacks. Pirates. Due to their location not far from the Somali coast, occasionally attacks may occur, and they usually cost somewhere around seven to twelve million dollars a year in lost vessels, fishing, and tourism. Regardless of all these issues, the current system of operations, especially in the tourism industry, has allowed them to rank in the top three richest countries in Africa, sometimes usually the actual richest one with a GDP PPP above 30k. A lot of numbers and letters there. Woo. All right, and with that, it's time for our animal correspondent, Gary Harlow. Gary Harlow here. Yeah? In Seychelles, you can find three terrestrial national parks on the three largest islands and six marine national parks open to the public. They also have 33 marine protected areas in all island chains. These protected areas are home to the many fragile and endemic species of fish, mammals, birds and reptiles. So many fish, coral and mollusk species and the national fish, the Indo-Pacific sailfish swims around here. Now bits make up about 20% of all mammals in Seychelles. Most of the remaining mammals are marine species like dugongs, pygmy sperm whales and striped dolphins. Birds of course are common including endemic species like the blue pigeon, the super rare black parrot only found on Pralin Island and the national bird, tropic bird. But the one animal that the Seychelles prides itself on being home to would be the Seychelles giant tortoise. In fact, the second oldest giant tortoise in the entire world, Esmeralda, can be found here. She's over 300 kilos and was born in 1846. That's it for me. Remember to follow my mate Caleb Seaton on Instagram. Who's this Caleb freak? It's not me. Surely it's not me. Thank you, Gary, who is totally not Caleb. We swear he is not. And with that, it is time to end this segment as we always do. 
food. Quick little side note, fun fact. Often red meat and poultry are reserved for Sundays, whereas the rest of the week, fish is the main source of protein. In any case, you have dishes like shark curry, octopus curry. You also have sausage rugai, smoked fish salad, various grilled fish, too many to list. Bouillon, that really cool ladob dessert, and uh, kak tak banan, so much fusion. And of course, you can't have culinary fusion without fusion of people, which brings us to... So I asked some of you guys the Seychellois geography peeps to explain what it means to be Seychellois. And here are some of the things you guys said. Because we're such a small nation, um, I feel like lots of Seychellois are very patriotic and very proud of where they're from. We bang on about Seychelles all the time. <laughs> and for me, Seychelles is the only place where I really feel at home. Like when I go back to Seychelles, I feel like I can be myself. I can, people could just get me and I don't ever need to explain myself. Yeah, I agree with my mum. It's, it's, it's really nice to be a Seychelles. We are, we're a small country, but we're unique and uh, it feels really nice. It's cool, it's fun and yeah, um, I like surprising people. Unique because, you know, we, our island is a thousand miles from anywhere. And when we grew up, we just felt that there was no other country and no other world except Seychelles. We soon learned there were other countries and other worlds. Thanks, guys. Now, as mentioned before, Seychelles is one of the few countries on Earth Europeans settled that was completely uninhabited upon discovery. Like, it was actually a huge pirate hotspot at one time. This guy, a famous French pirate, hid his treasure supposedly somewhere on Mahé Island, and it's like undiscovered to this day. It wasn't until the French came in in 1756 that Seychelles was finally permanently settled. I mean, weird choice of a notable person to name it after, but sure, Minister of Finance. From there, all the other people groups were brought in. But to illustrate, here's the demographics graph. Today, the country has just under 100,000 people making it the least populated country in Africa. It is really hard to get the specific numbers because most statistical reports don't include race or they'll just tell you the majority are Seychelles Creole, which are basically just people that are a mix between East or Malagasy African and varying degrees of French, British, and Indian heritage. So to summarize, it's mostly black, but everyone has a splash of some white and Indian in them. Maybe. However, if you really want to break down the numbers, I looked around at varying sources, took the numbers, and averaged out what I could, and I got somewhere around 85 to 90 percent of the country being Seychelles. Creole, and if I got my numbers right, somewhere around 6% of the country are indo seychellois or Indian from India, often called Malabars, as they are mostly southern Tamil Indians off the Malabar coast. However, again, over time, many have also mixed in, and it's estimated that somewhere around 80% of the country may have some Indian ancestry. The largest European groups would be the Anglo and Franco seychellois. I tried to gather as much data as I could, and from varying sources, it came out to somewhere around 5% European white seychellois, a little more British at about 3%, and about 2%. French. Finally, from there, about 1% of the population are Sino Seychellois, or Chinese Seychelles citizens, mostly Cantonese and Hakka descended from workers brought over by the British during colonial times. And again, just to clarify, don't take that graph as pure gospel. I tried my best to average out various sources that had conflicting numbers. Anyway, they use the Seychellois rupee as their currency, which by the way makes them the smallest country in the world to issue their own currency. And of course, as a former British colony, they use the types G British style plug outlets and they drive on the left side of the road. And bonus fun fact, Seychelles has the most powerful powerful passport in Africa. As of 2020, it has access to 151 countries visa-free, making it 29th most powerful globally. The country has three official languages, English, French, and the most commonly used Seychellois Creole, or Seychellois, which is basically a French-based Creole. Wait, both English and French? History. Long story short, it was basically like, D'accord, j'étais le premier à venir ici. Alors, par avec quand de conséquence, tout le monde ici apprend le français. Oh, you again! It's just like Saint Lucia all over again. Let's fight! Oh, so yeah, basically the British came in and everyone was already speaking French or Creole and it was too late to tell them to all switch so they just kept all three and made them all co-official. Creole was essentially created by the slave and indentured servant community as a means to intercommunicate and from there it became a standardized official language used in schools, newspapers, TV and even the National Assembly. We don't have as many rules as there are in French. So for example, in French you've got feminine and masculine. We don't have that in the same way. For example, the word for bread in French, you've got the bread, le pain. In Sichuan Creole, it's du pain. In French, if you want to say he is tall, she is tall, il est grand, elle est grande. Um, Sichuan Creole, she is tall, he is tall, is the same. Il est grand. Well, when I was growing up, my grandmother was always saying, ah! We sinifia and sinifia means you're annoying. Don't go and do fite. Fite means don't go to people's house uninvited. <laughs> 
Thank you. Now I talked to some of you guys, the Seychelles Wild Geography peeps. One reoccurring concept and theme that kind of encapsulates the Seychelles Wild identity is the fact that everyone is just kind of everything yet nothing all at once. Oh dang, that's proverbial. See, in Seychelles, it's kind of like Brazil with the Pardo people. You know, over time, the majority of the population got so ethnically mixed between all the races throughout the centuries that they kind of just created their own new Creole race. Everyone has a little bit of something from everywhere and you see hints of African, Indian, French, and British undertones. Kind of like me, you know, I'm half Korean. And my great grandma was black. There you go, Keith has black ancestry, bet you didn't know that. Faith-wise, the majority of the country at somewhere around 90% are Christian, mostly Catholic at about 75%. Government-wise, the country is operated by a unitary presidential republic. As in, yes, pretty much since the coup d'etat in 1977, their country has been ruled by one party, which is one of the more controversial aspects of this nation. They actually did have a few more coup attempts in the 80s, one ending with a gun battle at the airport and a hijacked airplane by a team of South African mercenaries posing as a rugby team. What the? Yeah, weird, but true story. But anyway, speaking of fake rugby, it's time for art with the sports part. Art, where are you? Oh jeez, do I seriously have to go get him? <laughs> you recorded it with something. Yeah. Whoa! How somehow I ended up back in Washington again for the second time. The top of your hair looks flat. <laughs> Mom. Shut your mouth. So let's be frank. Although people of Seychelles love the outdoors, they do kind of lack in the athletics department. Most major athletes hold day jobs and compete as a side hobby. One problem the country faces, they have the highest obesity rate in the sub-Saharan Africa with about 43% of for females and 21% for males. Nonetheless, they push through on the basketball court pretty well. Their national team qualified for the 2015 African Games, their greatest accomplishment to this day, where they competed against Against large countries like Egypt. No shocker, like most other countries, soccer or football, <laughs> I mean, it's it's not like it's, it's like a ball that you cook, kick with your feet, right? Is heavily cherished. They have 10 division one clubs. And the home turf field is the Linete Stadium in Victoria with a 10,000 seat capacity. The country also has two golf courses, a nine hole on Mahe Island and an 18 hole one in Pralin. In addition, Seychelles has also hosted the Indian Ocean Island games twice. It's like a mini Olympics for Indian Ocean countries. They ranked fourth overall. But anyway, what it comes down to is Seychelles is a nation of water. They prefer anything that involves the ocean. Usually this involves more recreational activities like kayaking, sailing, surfing, or snorkeling. For what it's worth, they are very hopeful that their swimming team could potentially win the country's first Olympic medals at the now delayed because Corona 21 Olympics in Tokyo. Especially with the rising new star Felicity Passon, who is the Africa Backstroke Champion and will participate representing Seychelles. All right, guys, since I'm back in Washington, that's going to be it for me. You want to do like an exit animation? No, we're good. I'm glad I came here, though. Thank you for having me at your you house. Sorry. Thank you, Art. Well, there you go. Seychelles just keeps on swimming. And along with swimming, the country enjoys a myriad of other pastimes and traditions. And with that, now it's time for Culture Stuff with Random Hannah. Right. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, Hannah's not here this week. So, um, yep. Um, uh, I guess you're going to have to fill in, Jillian. I got it. All right. As mentioned, Seychelles have a culture that is a total fusion of Europe, Africa, and Asia all in one. Even in the outskirt areas, you might still spot traditional architecture that fuses Victorian style patios with a combination gable roof thatched with palm leaves. Locally made handmade crafts, jewelry, and artwork are on display everywhere. There's even an entire craft village at Grand Cause Plantation. The three main islands have their own friendly rivalries and jokes about each other. People on Pralin are sometimes called Zanse Pralin, meaning stubborn or ill-mannered. The people of Ladigue are kind of seen as like country folk with an accent. For example, they call cookies gato, which means cake, when everyone else calls it biscuit. Even on the main island of Mahé, there's a north-south rivalry. The south side is often called au vent, or the wind, because it's generally windier there. And each side claims that they have the better beaches and hangout spots. Upon meeting, people will often give small gifts like jam chutneys or fruits from their garden. The family structure is much more matriarchal. Mothers 
usually have the main say in financial affairs and child rearing. It is not uncommon to see up to four generations in a single household. People also sometimes visit the Bon Homme or Bon Femme des Bois or a local seer fortune teller to seek good fortune and receive protective amulets for luck or charms called Gris Gris to curse enemies. Speaking of which, in Seychelles, superstitions are a long-standing tradition. According to folklore, don't whistle at night because it's bad luck. If your hands are itchy, money is coming your way. If your nose itches, someone is talking about you. And if your hand is clammy, you're jealous. And finally, there are a multitude of festivals and celebrations that they partake in. As a heavily Catholic influenced nation, Carnival in February is a colorful three-day event. Independence Day in June, the Beauvalone Regatta in August and September with yacht races and beach games. The most important month though would probably be October, which hosts the Creole Festival, the largest celebration of the year lasting six days. Everything from food to music. And you know the deal, the moment anyone mentions music, that means it's time for Keith, which is cool with me because I don't got beef with Keith. <laughs> All right, so with music, Seychelles has three traditional types of music that they highlight as a nation. Mutia, Cantole, and Sega. Insert Sega joke. Keith, you're supposed to make a Sega joke. Oh, oh, right. Sega, Dreamcast, greatest console ever. Uh, Mutia is the style more influenced off of African origins. It is a music and dance style that usually involves a bonfire around sunset and drums. The music was actually used as a form of communication amongst slaves during early colonial years as the songs were codified. Cantole is similar to western style ballroom music with dancing but much less formal. Instruments like guitars, accordions, and tambourines are very typically used in this style of music. And finally we get to Sega music. Sega! Again. Sega is actually Mauritian in origin but it's very popular in Seychelles as well. It is a fast upbeat type of style of music that allows more rhythmic moves for dancing. These two people are often seen as the iconic figures of Seychelles music industry, as they often fuse modern Creole pop with traditional folk instruments. Finally, on the island of Le Digue, you have the Mardilo dance. It largely resembles a purely African tribal dance with chanting and skipping with sticks. Otherwise, yeah, buy a Keith shirt at geographynow.com. It's gorgeous, just look at it. Beautiful, you can be beautiful too, just by wearing this. All right, my name is Keith, you are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Now it's time to move on to the very condensed history segment. In a nutshell, uninhabited islands that maybe a few Arabs and Austronesians passed by but nobody really bothered to settle. Vasco da Gama spots some of the islands, he documents it and moves on. Pirates, French come in and settle officially. First wave of slaves brought in mostly from East Africa or Madagascar. British come in, slave abolished, independence, coup d'etat the first president, country in practice, becomes a one-party state, more failed coups in the 80s, tourism boom, and here we are today. Yeah, so that's just about that. Now we move on to the famous people section. Notable people from Seychelles might include Francis Chan Sam, Angie Arneffi, Sandra Esperon, Canadian TV actor Neil Dennis, jockey Anthony Delpech, Wavel Ramkalawan, the long-serving president Albert René, Dar Leon, and tons of athletes like these, Lisa Abiche, Orly Fanchet, Dominic Dugas, Juliette Awan, and Dwayne Didon. Awesome. Seychelles, small yet definitely moving forward in a prosperous manner. Some of the prosperity is in thanks to the various interactions they have with the other countries outside, which brings us to... Now, as a remote, distant, small island nation, Seychelles is kind of like the country that Africa kind of pays a little attention to. In fact, the Commonwealth of Nations probably pays more attention to Seychelles than Africa. In fact, today, only 10 countries have embassies in Seychelles, and only one of them, Libya, is an African country. I'm just saying. In any case, one friend not too many people talk about is Cyprus. Their first president, Archbishop Makarios III, was imprisoned and exiled in British Seychelles. After he was released, he had only good things to say about the country, which cemented a deep historical friendship between the two. Today, when a Seychellois meets a Cypriot, they have a warm exchange and they both know about this event. A really close friend would also be the UAE. Not only do they provide the largest source of imports, mostly in petroleum, but sheikhs and other top officials have an affinity for the islands. They contribute largely for the tourism industry, with investing in things like the construction of new hotels and so forth, which further helps locals find more work. China and India are also huge partners in business and industry as well. Both countries have a minority community in Seychelles, which kind of compels both of them to invest. China was one of the first countries to recognize 
specialized in supply aid to Seychelles back in the 70s. They've helped construct a polytechnical school and housing development while doing solid trade deals as well. With India, their heads of state have met each other and have made numerous treaties and agreements. Most medications and construction workers are brought over from India, and the Indian Navy has a cooperative agreement to help with anti-piracy operations in the Indian Ocean. The closest European ties, though, would have to be their former colonial countries, the UK and France. Both contribute widely, not only in business and tourism, as both languages can be used here, but many Seychellois move or have family in these countries as well. Keep in mind, Seychelles is also a Commonwealth country, so diplomatically, they already have a leg up on the UK. Closer to home, Madagascar is close too. Not only are they one of the closest neighbors geographically, but many of the people are descended from the Malagasy, as they were brought over by the French during colonial times. Today, many people intermarry between each other's countries and both like to visit each other on occasion and say hi cordially. When it comes to their best friend, however, most Seychellois people I have asked have said maybe Mauritius. They share so much in common. Both were uninhabited upon discovery. Both were colonized by the French and British. Both speak Creoles that are pretty intelligible and both have a widely diverse fused population. If anyone gets the Indian Ocean Island story, it's these two countries hands down. In conclusion, Seychelles is a very unique country because it's kind of like a country that started with nobody and then somehow became everybody. Stay tuned, Sierra Leone is coming up next.